What's going on keepers? I'm Kane and this is Noodle. And today we're going to be making a video that I'm not really that excited about, but it's some useful information. And if you keep rodents and breed rodents, then you may find it useful as well. So I'm only putting it out on an informational basis and a utility basis, but nonetheless, I'm still excited about it. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. screwdriver and I'm going to show you why soon. There is an alternative tool but we'll get to that. Alright so today we're going to make a complete CO2 chamber kit for euthanizing rats. Now I'm going to go ahead and preface this by saying I do not enjoy killing animals. I love my rodents. I actually I really do. I got them as a tool to feed my snakes and I've grown to really enjoy them. I actually enjoy them more than a lot of my animals. But facts are I'm breeding more than I need, and I want to have more than I need, not, not enough. So the most clinical best way to euthanize an animal, and the only approved veterinary way, is by a CO2 chamber. In fact, in a lot of states it's illegal to euthanize in any other manner. So if we're going to do it, we're going to do it the most ethical and painless way, because I don't want to see any of Alright, with that out of the way, so what we've got here is a 32 quart Sterilite bin. Now as I said, Everything is going to be in the description below in the video, all the Amazon links. You can get all of this in one shopping cart on Amazon. So for starters, we've got this. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to drill a couple of holes in. So the reason for that is we've got these right here, which is one of the first things you're going to need. These are snap-in tire valves. As I said, don't worry if you can't see a close-up, it's in the description. So you're going to need a couple of these and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find a drill bit that's just a little bit smaller than this because you're going to pop this into this plastic bin and you want it to be airtight. So it's got to be a little bit smaller than this part right here so that it can slip over and seal in it. You'll figure that out as you go. I've got a couple of drill bits here so I can start out a little smaller and work my way up to the big size so that I don't bust my bin. So we're going to go ahead and drill that and don't worry, we'll fast forward through this part for you. So just stay tuned and we'll get this going. notice I put one higher up and one lower down and that is for a reason. So the lower one is where our CO2 is going to come in and the upper one is where it's going to come out. And the ideal here is that CO2 is heavier than air. So it's going to come in low and since it's heavier it'll stay to the bottom and as it rises up it'll push the air out of the top. Alright so we're going to go ahead and open this up here and try to clean off any of the little pieces, any of the little plastic pieces around the hole. Alright. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take our tire stem valve and we're going to work it. Through this hole. Now what you might have to do is take your bigger bit and just wall it down a little bit. But you want to make sure you have a tight fit so don't get too carried away. Alright. Now you can see how tight that was to get in there. That was just right. 
Now, I'm gonna go ahead and water this one out just a little bit too. All right, so now at this point, we've got one down low and one up high. You wanna make sure they're facing outwards, pointing out. All right, now we're gonna go on to our next step. We're just gonna set this to the side for a minute. All right, we're gonna get on to our next item that you're gonna need for this kit. So for starters, you're gonna need a CO2 tank. Don't worry, that's also listed on Amazon. You can order it straight to your door. Everything you see here, one click to your doorstep. So this is gonna be, as long as you wanna do it the way I do it. Now you can use a bigger or smaller tank, or you can use a bigger or smaller tub. But if you just wanna copy my setup, all you gotta do is go to the description below, click all the links, and you got one shopping cart to click and send to your door. All right, so the next thing you're gonna need here is a CO2 regulator. All right, you might notice a couple things changed out of place in the video there. We had a few things come up and we had to actually stop the video. But we're gonna continue on where we left, left off. So, as I was saying before, you got your CO2 regulator here. There's gonna be a couple of parts in the top right here. We're not actually gonna use this one part. I'm gonna sit to the side. I will tell you what it's for, but we will need this ring right here. <clears throat> All right. So, you're gonna need this ring to go inside of this fitting right here. And that is what's going to screw to your CO2 tank. So we're going to go ahead and screw that on. And then we're just going to give it a little bit of a snug. We don't want to go crazy with it, but we want to make sure it's tight. Just kind of keep your hand on it so you keep it straight up and down while you use your pliers to tighten it. Now, you can put plumber's tape on this and get a better seal and uh, make sure there's no leaks or anything. I'd probably advise it, but I'm not going to do it because I'm not too worried about it. So this part right here is to screw onto this if you want to just run a tube into this barb fitting and then run off that tube. But we're going to go with a little bit different setup, so we're not actually going to use that part. What we have right here is a fitting that is gonna allow us to go from this to like an air setting. So from gas to air, because there's different threads and sizes for different things. This is gonna screw on right here. All right, we're gonna give that a little bit of a snug. And then what we're gonna do is on our air hose, we're actually gonna take off this part right here and put it on this. Now, you just take your one set of pliers, probably go on ahead and have another set handy. Just loosen those up. And then this will screw right onto there. All right, <clears throat> now that we've got this attached, this right here is how you're gonna measure the amount of CO2 that is coming out. And there is a formula and a, a method to gassing rodents. You don't just go wide open and pour it in, but we'll go right towards the end. All right, <clears throat> so now I'm just gonna go ahead and take this wrap off of here. Now that we've got this end on here, what that's gonna allow us to do is make a quick connect to this with our other end of the hose. So 
we can take that off easily. And um, I've also got these down in the descriptions here. These are called cable cuffs. So what we can do with this is we can just hook it onto the back right here. It's kind of an easy way to keep up with your thing. Also, you could just connect right there and take this out and you don't ever have to actually unhook the hose if you don't want to. All right, so on to our next part, where we took off this part of here, we're gonna put one of these on. Once again, everything's in the description. So this right here, they only offer a two pack on Amazon, but it, you know, just keep the one as a spare, who knows, maybe you'll have a project for it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna screw it onto here where we remove the other part. This is, this is a connect for tire stem valves that'll lock that on there. So now, you're all locked into your tire. Every, every piece is disconnectable, quick and easy. You know, you can separate it, easy for cleaning, easy for storage. All right. I had to hit pause for a minute because I actually had to get a separate tool. So this next part here, uh, I'm going to do something a little different than where I got most of my ideals. Now most of this setup is really a carbon copy of another channel setup. It's called Finger Footprints. I usually don't give credit to other channels, but 90% of this setup is identical to a video that they posted. So I feel like credit where credit is due. And um, you can look around the video here, I'll put a little... A screenshot of their channel and if you want to go check out their video it shouldn't be too hard to find but um other than that there's only a couple things different from their setups one of them being that i got a sealed airtight uh container airtight i mean it might have a slight leak but compared to the rest and um is my exit valve here they don't use an exit valve they just use a type of tub to where it can seep out of the lid now you don't have to do this step but i'm going to tell you why as we go through it so for the next step, I mentioned in the beginning of the video that you need a little screwdriver because I tested it out on the separate part before I recorded it, but it wasn't working out too good. So what you're going to need is a set of tweezers or there's a thing you can order on Amazon called a tire stem remover tool or something of that nature. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put our tweezers in here and you're just going to spin and what it's going to do is unscrew this little stem from the inside. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna let air come through this. Now the next part here we're gonna need, this is also in the description of course. I'm not gonna use this part. I almost thought about doing it just cause I hate not using stuff cause I feel like I'm wasting, but I just don't need it. Um, this next part, we probably could have just screwed this in and left that stem and it should press the stem in, but I'm gonna take it out anyway just in case. And uh, the next part, we're going to take the stem out of the end of this too. So we're going to stick these in here, same as the other, and we're just going to take that stem out. And what that's going to do is let it let air through without something pushing that stem in to release it. Now this is um, where it's a little different than the other setup, uh, the one that I had said I got most of my deal off of. So the reason we've got this here, like I explained before, your oxygen's going to come up and go out at its highest point and your CO2 is heavy so it's going to stay down low and fill up and push the oxygen out. This is giving one area for the oxygen to come out and the reason we want the stem there is so we can take a glass of water and we can put the stem down in the glass of water. Now what this is doing is it is letting the least amount of um, CO2 out as possible. So if you run an open setup where it just leaks around the lid, you're going to use more CO2. And if you just leave an open hose, you're going to use more CO2. So what this is going to do, this is sealed up so mostly no CO2 can get out through the lid or, or air. And it's going to have to come out of this hose and bubble out of this water. 
And what that's also going to do is it's not going to let oxygen suck back in through the hose because it's down in the water. All right, so we've got our setup built here. Obviously, we're not going to do a live demonstration and euthanize any rats. One, because I don't want to put that content on, on YouTube. And two, because YouTube don't appreciate it. And I think you know how that process works. So you don't actually need to see something in here to get that it works. All right, so we've got everything hooked up. We're going to hook this back up right here. We're going to hook our quick connect right here. So everything is set up and ready. So the last part here to this process is how much CO2 do I use? How long? There is a process to it. So what you want to be at is you want a 30 to 40 percent range of CO2. Anything below 30 to 40 percent CO2 is just going to put the rodent to sleep. It's not actually going to kill it. And anything above it can actually cause irritation or pain. And don't worry, I know that sounds like a lot, but it's really simple. So there's a math equation you can do. And what you do is you take the size of your container, the amount of quarts, so in this case, it's a 32 quart container, and you times it by 0.3. And that's gonna give you the amount of carbon dioxide liters per minute that you need to pump in. And that's what this nozzle right here is gonna be for. So if you could go ahead and do that calculation for me, babe, with your calculator, we're gonna do, See, 32 times 0.3. What's that give us? 9.6. 9.6. All right. So we can basically say about 10. So just for easy math. So there's a line right here that says 10. So as long as you use the same setup that I use, your number is going to be 10. If not, just take the quart of your tub and times the point 0.3 and it's gonna give you your liters per minute. And that's gonna put you at about the 30% range. Now, what you wanna be at is about three to five minutes at that 30% range is gonna do the rodents. So what I would advise is to go ahead and do five minutes from the get-go, just so that you know the job is done. And then as you do it, if you wanna experiment with doing it a little shorter time and you know figuring out the least amount, then that's up to you. All right. So for the last step, we're going to show you how it works here. So you want to make sure your connect is on here all the way. Go ahead and put your piece down in your cup of water. Make sure your nozzle right here is set off. It's got an open and close spot. You just turn it to close. All right, we're going to go ahead and open up our CO2 tank all the way. All right, now that that's all the way open, we're going to slowly open our valve right here. And this marble is going to lift up and it's going to tell us our liters per minute. And like we had talked about, this one, we want it set on 10. And this tub isn't perfectly airtight, so what you have to do is put your hands on it. But once you put your hand on it, you can see the bubbles start coming out of the tub and that'll make it completely airtight and that's how you're going to be able to keep the most amount of CO2 used. Unfortunately Walmart or Amazon doesn't sell a tub that's perfectly airtight that I saw so this is the best I could get but once you put your hands on it right here it's tight. What I may do in the future is I may just take some extra gasket and put it around that edge so that it is airtight or if you're not worried about getting the most oh yeah always make sure you turn off both your knobs if you're not worried about making it completely airtight then just let it run like it is but once you're done you're gonna screw your valve right here Unhook this. Put it back through the ring. And if you want to, you can even take this one off and put it back through the ring. And 
that's it. You're set up, good to go. Easy, quick, removable. A tank this size is gonna last you quite a long time. Um, now one thing I will tell you, if you, you take it to a welder shop to get it refilled, a lot of times what they're gonna to offer to do is just swap it for you. So if you're gonna do that, I would recommend going ahead and taking my regulator and this off of here, obviously. And then, you know, if you got an old beat up dirty tank, don't worry about painting it and trying to make it look nice because more than likely you might get to the shop and they're gonna say, well, we can't refill it right now, but we can just swap you out for a full one. And then you're gonna get one back that's got chips and stuff on it like this. So I wouldn't fool with that. But anyway, that's it. That's how you can make you a CO2 chamber and a really efficient, clean, everything you need down in the description. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you watching today's video. I know I've said it a few times, but I just want to make it clear one more time that I do not enjoy the process of euthanizing an animal. I really love my rodents. I really enjoy them. Like I said before, honestly, a lot more than some of my other reptiles and fish. But at the end of the day, they're a utility and the snake's got to eat. And I want to have more than I need, not just right at the right amount and then end up missing meals on my snakes. So this is the most ethical way to get it done. And hopefully this is some helpful information to you guys. If it's a daunting process, you can come back to this video and, you know, make your own setup. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. And as always, remember, your hobby can bring you joy, but only Jesus can bring you peace. I hope to see you guys in the next one.